morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service on this uh, second Sunday of End Times. Uh, last Sunday was Reformation, first Sunday, and uh, next Sunday will be Saints Triumphant in two weeks, uh, Christ the King. But today we focus on uh, Christ's return on Judgment Day. When he will, as the bulletin says, will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. The goats, the unbelievers, eternal terror, pain, suffering, and hell. But the sheep, believers, those who trust in Jesus as their Savior, eternal joy and happiness with him in heaven. I just want to be a sheep, like the song says. Ba, ba, ba. We begin our service with prayer. O oh Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We pray that you would open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word, we may repent of our sins, believe in Jesus, and grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our opening hymn, sung by our soloist, hymn 209, Day of Wrath, O Day of Morning. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. 
But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his holy life and innocent death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. <clears throat> Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and to the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith, and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture lessons for the second Sunday of End Times, you'll find printed in the bulletin, beginning on page 5. Our Old Testament lesson, just two verses, uh, verses of prophecy from the book of Daniel, where Daniel sees this vision of the Ancient of Days, the Eternal God. Specifically, Jesus Christ returned in judgment as he sits on his throne and opens the books. We'll hear about more, more about those books later. From Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were open. This is God's word. Our second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 where through the Apostle Paul, God teaches us about Judgment Day. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should not surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation is a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another, and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. This is God's word. Hallelujah. Watch, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Hallelujah. Please stand for our gospel lesson, also our sermon text for today. Uh, Jesus' words from Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses 31 to 46, where he identifies himself as the shepherd who then separates the sheep from the goats, believers from unbelievers. The words of our Savior. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. 
I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for our sermon hymn, a one taken from our Christian worship supplement. Hymn 731, The King Will Come at Age's End. Terror for some, the unbelieving goats, 
but pure joy for us, your redeeming sheep. Amen. Three magical words, no, well, not magical, but you sometimes hear them or even say them to uh, uh, close a conversation. In the end, right? We are in the end times. Not just the second last, third last Sunday of the church year, but uh, given all those signs that Jesus gives us in Matthew chapter 24, wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, uh, um, false teachers, false Christs, the love of most will grow cold. All of these things have been fulfilled, are being fulfilled. We are living in the end times. In the end. So recess is over. Uh, the children were discussing something. And finally, somebody says, in the end, to close that conversation. In the end, a uh, business meeting, uh, time's late, and you're... Uh, summarizing things up, making decisions for, for the next few days. In the end, even a phone conversation. I mean, you look at your watch and say, it's been too long. Uh, let's close this up in the end. Well, it's more important than uh, conversations in the playground, at a business meeting, or over the phone. We are in the end times. It's a time of life or death to you know who we are, why we're here, and where we're going now to get there. And finally, who cares uh, who gets the best grades or promotion at work or even who the next president is? I guess that's still up in the air. Because really, Jesus is king. It's not just Jesus 2020, it's Jesus for eternity. He's the one who's really in charge. And it's Jesus who describes this last day when, unlike his first coming, humble, born in a barn, he will return with all his holy angels, and all will be judged. And so, in the end, it's trust that makes all the difference. That's the theme for our sermon as we look at these verses, Jesus' own words. In the end, it's trust that makes all the difference. You see, those who trust in Jesus... They'll ask, why do you praise me? But those who trust in themselves will ask, why are you punishing me? Again, bless our, our study of these verses. I'll read again the first three verses of our text. When Jesus says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Judgment Day. Terror for some, joy for others. And actually, uh, it's Jesus, who is God, who knows all things, who pronounces the, the verdict privately. Because he knows all things. He knows our hearts. He knows who's a sheep, who's a goat, who's a believer, who's an unbeliever. He knows who has shown the fruits of their faith in their life and who hasn't. And he will pronounce judgment. Eternal pain and suffering in a place originally prepared for the devil and the evil angels. Uh, eternal separation from God. Eternal <coughs> despair and regret in hell. But then eternal joy with Jesus in heaven. Our place at the heavenly banquet. <clears throat> How can I be sure? How can you be sure that we're saved? Uh, that we're uh, forgiven and going to heaven? Because when I look in the mirror, I don't like what I see. And I look in my heart, I don't like how I feel. It was uh, in both of our opening hymns, first hymn and then the sermon hymn, made mention of these books. And also it was the last sentence of our Old Testament lesson, when the Ancient of Days takes his place on his throne, on his judgment seat, and then it says the books are open. What books? Well, there's two, really. The books that list all of our 
dirty deeds, the things we've done wrong, our sins, the things that we fail to do right. Yeah. Nothing is hidden in all creation. Everything is laid bare before the eyes of whom, to whom we must give an account, especially on the last day. That's the law. That should shame us. But there's a second book. That's the book of life. And it's mentioned in that familiar baptism hymn, Write this name we now have given. What? Write it in the book of heaven. The book of life. Your names are written in the book of life because God wrote his name on you. Jesus first lived a perfect life, suffered and died on the cross, and rose again. And then the Holy Spirit came, and oftentimes through the water of holy baptism, gave you new birth into his family. Where God wrote his name on you. You belong to me now. Your name is written in the book of life. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Now, last Sunday I was down in Georgia, and uh, uh, both my wife Lauren and I gave the preacher and the pianist breaks there on Reformation Sunday, singing Mighty Fortress at where? Mighty Fortress Lutheran Church, Hiram, Georgia, Northwest Atlanta. And I preached on Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, that most of you know from memory. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. That's what makes us blessed. Not our boasting of what we've done, but God's blessing us. The Father who so loved the world that he sent his Son to save us and he sent the Holy Spirit to sanctify us. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. See, in the end, trust makes all the difference. You and I are sheep. We are believers. We trust not in ourselves, but in our Savior, in our Savior Jesus, so that no one can boast. It's uh, the opening verses from Peter's first epistle that oftentimes I'll speak at the graveside. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. And while family members and friends grieve at the graveside, we know that our loved one is now with Jesus, their inheritance, and one day we'll see them there. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. The cross. The open tomb, the baptism font. Sola gratia, grace alone, God's riches at Christ's expense. Sola fide, faith alone, a gift from God itself. Scripture alone, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Watch words of the Reformation we can carry with us throughout the year. You see, in the end, trust makes all the difference. And now we'll see in the next paragraph that those who trust in Jesus will ask, why are you praising me? Then the, uh, for I, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Isn't it surprising that on Judgment Day, when our Savior 
now serves as judge and invites uh, sinful yet forgiven sheep who trust in him as their savior to now come and live with him in heaven. Isn't it surprising that now, instead of praising himself and, and accounting for what he did to live, to die, to rise again, it's Jesus, our judge, who praises us. You know, why should he praise us? For it is God who works in us both to will and to act according to his good purpose. Right? Philippians chapter 2, or the last verse of my sermon from last Sunday. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do, to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. Right? It's not just God who gets the credit for our salvation. He gets the credit for our sanctification. Maybe this little illustration can help us understand what's in the mind of Jesus, our Savior and Judge. So you're at a basketball game, you're a proud parent. Your son or daughter finished the game, and whether the, the, the team won or lost, when you get home, you remember play by play all that they did. And uh, you share with them the good plays, not the bad. Not the times where they drop the ball, miss the pass, or or lob, uh, you know, lob that last second shot. But the good plays, because you are their parent, and you love them. In a similar way, it's Jesus, our brother, our savior, our judge, who will not list all of our failures, the things we've done wrong, or the things we failed to do right. No, he'll list only the fruits of our faith. Concrete examples, right? Uh, thirsty, hungry, a stranger, uh, needing clothes, sick, and in prison. People in need. For whatever you've done for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And so you see, Judgment Day, our judge, who knows all things, you know, he knows the verdict. But now he gives the evidence. Just kind of backwards from a, a modern day courtroom. He gives the evidence of our faith. When we've helped others in need, and by so doing, we've helped Jesus. And so in the end, it's trust that makes all the difference. Those who trust in Jesus will ask, why do you praise me? For I am just your humble servant. You saved me, and I'm saved to serve you. Come, you who are blessed. Take your inheritance prepared for you. Your home in heaven. Of course, there's a flip side of the coin. Uh, the goats, sheep on one side, the goats on the other. Certainly a shepherd can tell the difference. The king will reply, or then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. To whom does Jesus speak these words? <coughs> to unbelievers. Yeah, you can see their unbelief. And you can see the evidence of that unbelief. They're goats. They're gruff goats. Because in the end, uh, trust makes all the difference. Those who trust in Jesus will ask, why do you praise me? But those who trust in themselves They'll ask, why are you punching me? I like to sing with kids, like that little song, I just want to be a sheep, ba ba ba. Don't want to be a goat, no. Nope. And, uh, of course, we are enjoying our granddaughters down in Georgia, too, our two little Georgia peaches, Debbie and Isla, going on walks, singing songs, Jesus loves me, I am Jesus, little lamb. And also singing some uh, other songs, like, maybe you've heard this one, Bill Grogan's Goat. Allow me to sing it for you. And then I take some pieces of that, uh, uh, of that song and uh, tie them up with thoughts from our sermon. Bill Grogan's goat was feeling fine. Ate three red shirts right off the line. Bill took a stick, gave him a whack, and tied him to the railroad track. The whistle blew. Woo-hoo! 
The train grew nigh. Bill Grogan's goat was doomed to die. He gave three groans of awful pain, coughed up those shirts, and flagged the train. Of course, the kids and grandkids were echoing my song. Like uh, Bill Grogan's goat, unbelievers are gruff. And goats eat anything, but they shouldn't eat the three red shirts on the line. Um, uh, unbelieving goats not only will eat anything, they'll believe anything. Things that are not in God's Word. Back in the garden, uh, what did the devil tell Adam and Eve? Did God really say? And the world echoes that same sentiment. No, you make up the rules. Besides, if everybody's doing it, it can't be wrong. And so, uh, yeah, Bill Grogan's going to eat three red shirts right off the line. Uh, Bill didn't like that, so he took a stick, gave him a whack, and then tied him to the railroad track. All right? You sin, you deserve to be punished. Um, why are you punishing me? That's what those who trust in themselves will ask. Because you deserve it. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe, like rough goats, will be condemned. Now, of course, the song for kids ends up on a happy note. He copped up the shirts and flagged the train. He didn't, he didn't die. He didn't get the punishment that he deserves. But on the last day, sorry, no red flags to cough up. No second chances. You see, in the end, trust makes all the difference. Those who trust in Jesus will ask, well, I, why are you praising me in humble faith? But those who trust in themselves, not in Jesus, will ask, why are you punishing me? It's not my fault. It's the way you made me. I, was, I wasn't born. Again, not giving honor and respect to Jesus our Savior and King, but... Uh, again, denying any accountability. Vengeance is mine, God says. I will repay, says the Lord. It's the last hymn for today. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, hymn 382. My hope is built on nothing less, right? And it's the last verse, which really uh, uh, applies well to today's service. When he shall come with trumpet sound, O oh, may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Like you, I just want to be a sheep. Uh, uh, uh. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues then with the prayer of the church listed on pages 8 and 9 in the bulletin and then the intercessory prayers and due to the length you may remain seated. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, you speak to us in words of love and light and power. Fill us with peace today as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Guide our lives together to today as we see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Work in us today through your spirit that our thoughts, words, and actions glorify you and serve our neighbor. Fill us with the word we have heard today and move us to believe it and live it. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Take away their fear of criticism and contention and make them bold to say what you say. Fill them with a love like yours and lead them to announce the forgiveness of sins as your free gift to us in all people. Move us to love all ministers of the word wherever they serve. Forgive us for the times we hear your word but fail to live it in our lives. Break down the apathy that lurks in us and lead us and leads us to ignore eternal realities. Convict us with your law and then fill us so full of your gospel that we overflow with zeal to do your will. Give us thankful hearts to live and love with joy. Guard and guide us as we live in a society that despises what you say about marriage. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, 
respect, and patience. Move parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus, even when their children grow up. Protect us from the evil that surrounds us. Give us pure hearts and minds. Provide your divine compass for those who govern us by making laws and setting policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime and aggression. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to care for those who cannot care for themselves. Bless our land with peace and prosperity so that the gospel may be proclaimed to all. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and open the gates of heaven. Fill us with joy over every sinner who repents and comes to trust in your grace. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body and mind, those who are listed in our bulletin on page 12, and to this list, this week we also add Ken Elmer, Janelle Mann, and Jennifer Strauss. Fill eager minds with wisdom to discover new ways to treat disease and illness. Give patience and compassion to those who care for the sick and dying. Lift the eyes of the dying to your love in Christ. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We continue our intercessory prayers as we pray for this past election day and its results uh, this past Tuesday. We thank you, God, our Savior, for placing us in this country with the privilege to vote in free elections. Move, us to move many to exercise that privilege responsibly this day, and so guide the process to give us wise and effective rulers. Keep us mindful that whatever the outcome, you are in control, and whatever the issues, the only lasting one is the issue of eternal life for all who love you in Christ. Bless us for Jesus' sake. Amen. We also pray for our St. John's member, Dixie Wagner, who celebrated her 86th birthday this past Thursday. We praise you for being with her in good days and evil, in joy and sorrow and sickness and health. We praise you above all for having provided her with the rich comfort of your word and sacraments. Continue to make these treasures her joy and delight. Be her strength, even when earthly strength fails. And finally, bring her and all of us to the joy and glory of eternal life in your presence. This coming Wednesday, we celebrate Veterans Day, so we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the selfless service of those who risk their lives to protect our nation, preserve our freedoms, and restore peace in the face of brutal aggressors. Grant relief to those who continue to experience emotional or physical agony from their days of combat. Give us a sense of responsibility for their welfare. Comfort those who mourn for loved ones who die while performing their duty to our country. Enlist all who are in the military forces into your church militant, that they may pledge eternal loyalty to Christ our King and know his peace. Amen. Eternal Lord, you guide the world with your mighty power and love all people because your Son lived and died and rose again. Hear the prayers spoken and in silence, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us rise and join in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to be a guest at your holy table, but you are the friend of sinners, and you will not cast me out. This bread is your body, which bore my sins upon the tree. This wine is your blood, which purifies me from all guilt. At your invitation, I come rejoicing. Receive me, my Savior. Amen.
You may be seated. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 